When does life begin? Does life begin at conception? Well, I'm a preacher. I'm a Christian. You expect me to say, of course it begins at conception, not according to the Bible. Evangelicals have no idea what they're talking about. Neither do Catholics on this one. The only good thing you can say about Catholics on abortion is that they're the ones who have been consistent. Evangelicals or Johnny Come Lately's on this thing. But this is all about political power when it comes to evangelicals. It's all about a political thing. Uh, if you have sincere concern for the unborn in your heart, then I'm not talking to you. But this matter of taking the rights away from women, it's all been about uh, politicizing this thing because no way to punish men was ever contemplated. It was all about taking rights away from women. This is not pro-life. This is anti-women. So because some of you, I tried to be moderate in the way that I talked to you. It didn't help. didn't work. You came at me like, I don't know what I'm talking about, so now I'm coming back. All right. Now let's talk about these verses that you want to use. For example, one of your favorite proof texts is John the Baptist. Luke chapter 1 says that John the Baptist leaped in his mother's womb. You know what that chapter also says? That John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. No woman today is carrying John the Baptist. Okay, So I would say to a woman, you know, I would never tell a woman what she needs to do in that situation, but I would tell her this. If an angel appears to you and tells you that you have a child within you that needs to be born, and you know it's an angel, that's a child you probably need to have. But that's not going to happen because no woman today is carrying John the Baptist. But if you're going to say, well, he, you know, that the fact that he leaped in his mother's womb proves that abortion is wrong or has anything to do with abortion, which it doesn't, then you also need to say that that would only apply to children who have been filled with the Holy Spirit from their mother's womb. And that doesn't apply to any child today. Okay, So whether you're pro-life, or pro-choice, that has nothing to do with abortion, okay? John the Baptist was a very unique situation, all right? Same thing with um, Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. Favorite proof text to pro-lifers is, and, and I use that in quotations because you're not really pro-life, but, but they use Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, and they say, where God told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I ordained you to be a prophet, okay? And, they, and, and people say, well, that right there proves that life begins at conception. No, it doesn't. Maybe you don't read the verse, but that's not at all what it says. If you're going to use that verse to tell when life begins, life begins before conception. Listen to it again. The familiar verses need to be read more closely by the legalists, especially the evangelical ones. Listen to the verse again. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and ordained you to be a prophet. That verse doesn't teach that life begins at conception. If that verse is dealing when life begins, then it is saying that life begins before conception in the mind of God, which makes birth control sinful. And you are murdering when you use birth control. Don't, don't come at me with this nonsense, okay? Because I know how these people think. I know the verses. And a lot of you are very sincere. You just, been, you just believe what you've been told. You've never studied this subject for yourself. All right, another proof text. Um, now, a proof text is a verse or a chapter or a part of the Bible that people go to to prove what they already want to believe. That's what I mean by proof text. But Psalm 139 is another proof text, all right, where David said that, um, you know, God formed him in his mother's womb. But he also says, before you formed me in my mother's womb, the days of my life were written in your book. So all these verses that you think teach that life begins at conception actually teach that life begins before conception, if they're going to be taken as literally as you want to take them. So um, they don't help your case at all. What we need to do is the moderate view that everyone could take is to just let the woman make the decision based on what she thinks she needs to do in that situation and let her answer to her God. Okay, this does not need to be uh, this is not a decision that needs to be made by anybody except her. But if you want to play the Bible card, the only section of the Bible that touches this at all, and listen, the first references, recorded references to abortions were in ancient Egypt. Now, this was a practice that was going on, and this is, by the way, why those in Judaism and ancient Judaism did not uh, consider the fetus a life. They knew about abortion, and the reason the Bible never condemns it when it was going on, it was so rampant around is because the Bible doesn't agree with your uh, opinions on it. They knew about abortion. It's been going on for centuries. All right, But the only section of the Bible that touches this in any way, shape, or form is in Exodus 21. And there, I said this the last time, but nobody heard it. So I'm going to say, say, say it more clearly and slowly for you this time. Okay, There was a law that said, if a man strikes a woman who is with child, and causes her to have a miscarriage, causes her unborn child to be born prematurely, and there is no damage to the woman. Now, the baby's dead, okay? But there's no damage to the woman. Here is the 
uh, penalty for that. He has to pay a fine if the husband of the woman, the father of the child, determines that he has to pay a fine. Now, the, the law of Moses required the death penalty for murder. All right? So here is a case where a man causes a woman to lose a baby. That was not considered murder because he did not have to give his life for it. He had to pay a fine if the husband, God said, I'm going to leave that up to the husband. But if the woman was injured, then it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If she died, then whoever did that to her was to be put to death. So let's slow this down. If a man strikes a woman who is with child and causes her to have a miscarriage, he is to pay a fine determined by the husband. He's not to be put to death. Okay. So that is not murder. If something happens to the woman in that case, if, if in their involvement or in that fight or in that uh, confrontation, the woman is hurt, then if it's an eye for an eye, whatever. I mean, if she can't walk anymore, then you take away that man's right to walk. If she dies, you take his life. So a distinction is made between the life of the mother who's already here and the life of the unborn. All right. So stop trying to use the Bible to support your pathetic political agenda. All right. This is not about concern for the unborn. We could do a video and talk about all the ways that this could have been avoided where unwanted pregnancies could have been stopped with much more reasonable methods than taking rights away from women. This is a political issue. And even if you are fully pro-life and you really do care about the unborn, pray about it and trust in God who will do all things right. But let the woman make the decision based on her body before her God. Let God do the judging. And you and I, Stay out of it.